Kolleginnen und Kollegen, in bester Leibniz-Manier werden wir jetzt recht flexibel die Reihenfolge ändern und mit Genehmigung von Frau Ministerin Kunst wird als nächster sprechen Herr Moedas. Dear Commissioner Moedas, before leaving the floor to you, I would like to announce your immediate departure after your speech. You have to fly back to Brussels tonight due to a very early flight to South Africa, as I know, tomorrow morning. Again, thank you very much in advance. Uh, please come back to Berlin, please come back to Leibniz. Leibniz is an open house for friends uh, and, uh, and moreover. And uh, we wish you a safe trip back home and take care. So now. Minister Wanka, Minister Kunst, Professor Kleiner, Professor Henkel, uh, Mr. Heller from the Parliament, esteemed guests, meine Damen und Herren. Es ist mir eine große Freude, heute Abend bei Ihnen zu sein und zu Ehre des 20-jährigen Jubiläums der Leibniz-Gemeinschaft zu Ihnen zu sprechen. Sorry, please. After. Sorry about my German. It's, uh, it was a mistake, but now it's done. <laughs> um, thank you so much. I, I'm really glad to be here, and uh, really a, a great day to be here uh, in such uh, a beautiful place. Um, we are here tonight to celebrate the 20 years of the Leibniz community, and the prestigious society needs science prize giving. Leibniz is a cornerstone of independent research in Europe, a community of some 89 research institutions, each addressing the social, economic, or ecological challenges we face in an increasingly interconnected world. It is a poignant year for the city of Berlin and for Germany. Only a few months ago, thousands of people celebrated actually a spectacular World Cup win, won by a team of both seasoned players like Lamb, Müller, Klaus, and Das Wunderkind, Mario Goetz. A team that I think embodied talent and hard work, youth, skill, and experience, many of the qualities that society needs in the 21st century science and research today. Of course, 2014 also marks the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Only a few weeks ago, this city united once more in a celebration of an event which had a profound impact in Germany on every one of us, on every German, including on the German researchers. Science and research are an important basis for the state and for the society. These, and I'm quoting, was the message in Article 38 of the legal basis establishing a research landscape for a unified Germany. A unified Germany suddenly faced with the task of building a competitive and coherent research environment from east to west. You know, to me, this is the essence of responsible research and innovation. The process of aligning our work to the current values, needs, and expectations of society. Although the goalposts were shifting, German states rose to the challenge. 
focusing their energy and expertise on new materials, on information technology and microelectronics, on biotechnology, environmental research, earth sciences, health. Of course, the Leibniz story became an integral part of this research renaissance. Open and attractive research systems, like those which grew out of a united German, were actually, for me, the forerunners of what we have now achieved across the European Union and beyond. It is something we see every day in the European research area. And thanks to the support of research associations like Leibniz, the conditions for the completion of the European research area are today in place in Europe. It is actually that legacy of research institutions working in harmony to increase the influence and impact of their work that has brought us together in this celebration here tonight. Indeed, 20 years of Leibniz's contribution to Germany, to European science and to research, to our global society, is plenty of cause for celebration. From Berlin scientists' recent discovery of a new species, a frog in West Africa. I didn't know this one to the international cooperation that led to the discovery of prehistoric fossils ancestral to the rhinoceros ever found in Asia. With scientific work, this exciting happening is actually our doorstep. We cannot run the risk of a disconnect between science and society. Something actually that unfortunately on a wide range of issues at European and national level has been happening, from shale gas to data privacy to other matters, you feel that sometimes there's a disconnect. So we policymakers and academics need to better grasp and communicate the transformative connection between science, innovation, and society. Engaging the whole society in the research and innovation process in full respect of gender equality and ethical accountability is for me the only way to give citizens a clear sense of ownership over actually public investment in the very science and research that helps our global society transform and move forward. Whether you're actually someone who lived through the division of East and West, or who learned about it after, seeing where the wall once stood on the 9th of November this year, through the installation of thousands of illuminated balloons tracing the artificial route that came between families, friends, and neighbors, and each were then set free into the night sky. It was a stunning moment and stark, actually, reminder of how very different Germany and Europe and the world actually looked only 25 years ago. It brings home the fact that although we still face many difficulties. We have never been in a better position to work and to advance together, to ensure that open science and innovation remain an important basis for European progress. European research and innovation as an ecosystem should be one which our endeavors to take risks, to invent, to modernize, to transform and to innovate are rewarded. Taking risks is what science is about. Cutting-edge science 
innovative entrepreneurship, and world-first research should be celebrated and supported. This is clear in everyone's interest. The long-term benefits will most certainly eclipse our short-term difficulties. We need to ensure that great ideas, even the risky ones, can benefit from access to the right partners, the right investment, and the right infrastructure. It is for these reasons that I'm very proud of the extraordinary investment plans announced by the European Commission just yesterday. I'm proud how concretely they seek to address the risk-averse nature of European markets. The prevalent unwillingness to fund disruptive innovation. Even when a business has a usual approach to investment, clearly that isn't working. In short, I wanted to tell you tonight that this investment plan for Europe has actually three main objectives. The first is to provide additional impetus to the EU's recovery, and we all agree on that. The second is to take a firm, decisive step in meeting the long-term needs for our economy. And the third, and for me the most important, is to strengthen the European dimension of our knowledge, human capital, and physical infrastructure. Three things vital to the continued development of European research. So, we will work very, very hard to make the most of this opportunity. This investment package is an opportunity for research, science and innovation. We are and we will be at the core of this investment package because the future of Europe, the future of growth, depends on innovation and science and research. So to ensure those funds give energy to wonderful projects that otherwise would have been left on the sidelines, their great potential to contribute actually has to be the key. The projects that will contribute for the future, the ones that are disruptive, the ones that are innovative, those are the ones that we want to look for. To provide the right kind of stimulus for scientific research institutions, to take up new partnerships with industry, to actually bring new ideas to market and make European innovation actually profitable, to be transparent in the way those funds are used, and of course to ensure that they are only used for ideas with the greatest potential to create jobs, to boost economy, growth, and to leverage further investment. We have to go from a model of rent-seeking to a model of innovation. This is why I want to take action. I want to grow an innovation-responsible society in Europe, an environment that is favorable to homegrown 21st century disruptive innovation that I will base in th three actually basic principles. The first one is that you don't have disruptive innovation if you don't have adequate public and private funding for research, development, and innovation. And I'm so happy that the Minister of Anka tonight was here announcing, if I could understand through my translation, actually exactly that, adequate public uh, financing. Second, a unified research area, open to the world, without fear, without protectionism with firm foundations in the internal market. The biggest contribution we can as research, science and innovation give to the internal market is to complete the unified research area. It is clear to me what an important role the Leibniz community can have and have and will have and will play here in this unified research area. Third, a market environment that quick and has the ability to respond to innovation. That makes it easier for the great ideas 
devised here to become commercial products and services, creating entirely new markets, transforming the ones that exist through open science and disruptive innovation. We actually have the right tools at our disposal in Europe. We have an ed educated workforce. We have a strong tradition of academic excellence, like the one we celebrate today. And, of course, a great history of technological and industrial leadership. So, all we have to do is to continue to cover new ground together to reflect the qualities of a winning team, working ever closer together, providing strengths where there is weakness and energy where there is fatigue. It seems like every 20 years, Germany wins a World Cup. <clears throat> as someone from a country that loves football, as much as Portugal, I actually feel a little jealous, but what can I do? I hope, I actually hope, as an European, that you continue to do so. And when you do, I hope that you look back in 20 years' time. I hope to see how much Europe might have been actually changing over that period. I believe probably beyond recognition. Thankfully, there are no walls left to tear down in Germany. Right now, inaction is the only thing that actually stands in Europe's way, and yesterday's announcement demonstrates that the new commission is very much prepared to act for our shared prosperity. I wish you a great deal of enjoyment this evening. I'm actually sad that I have to go but I really wish you that you can celebrate what can be achieved when actually research contributes to the betterment of society and science. So I hope that I'll come very soon because my relationship with this country has been for a long time now. And I just can tell you that I hope that in the five years that we'll have here in the Commission, I'll be here to listen to you, to learn from you, because there's a lot of things happening. There's a lot happening here in research and science and innovation, and I will be here to listen and to be the torchbearer of the importance of science and innovation for the solution of Europe to create more growth, more jobs, and less unemployment. Thank you very much to all of you.